Pastor Dan, this past year, our focus here at St. John has been discipleship. Why that theme for this past year? Yeah, it seemed to be God's next step for us after the story. Uh, maybe you remember, for 31 weeks, we went through the Bible, we learned its big picture story, and we learned really the summary of the scriptures, that, that it's God's plan of redemption for his lost people. And so that left us uh, as a church with a purpose. And that purpose is the Great Commission, isn't it? That's right. It was the last thing Jesus said before leaving earth. He said, go make disciples. Not set up feeding centers or plant churches, but make disciples. And so we thought, you know, we better figure out what that means and how do we go about it. And that explains then the sermon series that we've had. We've had two six-week sermon series that really focused on discipleship and what a disciple looks like. And then we developed that as a spiritual assessment for the members to take. Yes. The discipleship team uh, led by Debbie Arfston, you and me worked on it too, is this put together this discipleship assessment. It's called the Marks of Discipleship. Uh, Many of our folks have taken it, but if you haven't, we'd love you to go online or pick up a hard copy uh, in the Narthex. It really offers some different components of discipleship and helps us rate ourselves uh, where we're at in that. You know, I think sometimes folks have a tough time really wrapping their heads around what is a disciple? <laughs> How would you explain what a disciple is? In a word, a disciple is a follower of Jesus. Uh, there's many definitions, Pastor Pete. The one we've landed on is this. A disciple is uh, one converted to Christ by faith and becoming more like him. Mm, that's exciting. So the obvious question is, what's our next step? Yeah, it's a great question. Glad you asked. Uh, and we're praying about that as we, we look at the data from the assessments, as we invite more people to take it. Uh, we trust that God's going to show us something out of the analysis that will say, all right, here's the next step, whether it be a Bible reading plan. We're not exactly sure, but we're trusting the Lord on it. Mm. And that's one thing I do appreciate about you, Pastor Dan, is your desire to seek the Spirit of God in what direction we are to go as a mm. church. So mm. thank you for being a faithful mm. servant. Thank you, brother. John. Morning. Thanks for being with us today. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I wanted to talk with you because as I've watched you, you seem to have kind of a natural way about this discipling thing. Mm. And could you could you tell us then uh, what you see as a couple of really key components to being a discipler? Yeah. Uh, I th when I look at discipleship and I look at it from the context of um, the Bible and how Jesus did it, I really I think you really got to focus in on a couple things. You got to focus on on people, okay. building a relationship with people, and people's relationship with God. With God and assessing where, where that's that at is. and how you can encourage them okay. down the road because that's that's what being a disciple is. It's yeah. helping move a person from here to there to the next spot. And then and then also inviting folks back in yeah to, to to church to events and to spend time with you i've seen you do that yeah thank you yeah we do that um we have a wednesday morning prayer group yeah that we um we have every single week um that we invite people to come pray together um which is another huge component i think in discipleship is tell, just prayer tell us a little bit more about why that time in prayer together how can that be a discipling uh, yeah. activity well um when you pray with people, um, 
a couple things happen. Mm. One, you really, um, you I think you experience God in a different way because you can see how other people are approaching God and what they're saying. So yeah. um, you can get uh, not only a confidence in yourself to be able to um, approach God and to pray, because sometimes that's a difficult thing for people, right. uh, but you can learn from other learn people from together when you're praying with yeah. them on uh, yeah. what they're saying and, and how they're bringing these petitions to God. It's really that simple. Yeah. Yeah. And and we can get better at praying by praying with others and hearing them. Yeah. Um, one last thing. I know you've done something, you and Abby, in your home this year. If you could tell us about um, how you've used your home as yeah. a discipling place. Yeah. So we had what's called a uh, living room concert at our house um, where we invited the praise team at St. John's mm -hmm. and we had about 60 uh, people that were um, um, you know friends of friends that Adults. came yep yeah. and uh, we had a, a praise night it was a uh, worship night it was a uh, night of prayer and it was a night of encouragement too we really wanted to at that um, that a night was special because uh, we wanted to come around yeah. our good friends the Phalos and right. To encourage them in uh, in their walk at this point, and just to uh, to be able to do that in that setting was, I think, a very powerful discipleship um, tool that allowed people to see um, friendship, community in a different way. And God at the center. Yeah. Thanks for having that as something that we can also look to as a, a place to disciple others. Yeah. We appreciate you coming in, Jeff. Yes, absolutely. Thank Keep you. Strong, buddy. All right. Hi, I'm Mary Rose Mimers and I help coordinate the small groups here at St. John's. Hi, and I'm John Barrent. I'm one of our small group facilitators. John, you and I have been involved in small groups since they started about four years ago, and I think you'd agree with me that small groups really are part of the body of Christ. They help us grow as disciples. Absolutely. Uh, I think about the, the sermon text from just a couple of weeks ago with the two Emmaus disciples, and while they were leaving Jerusalem and walking along, they were really discouraged until Jesus joined them, and they became encouraged. And they even said later, uh, weren't our hearts burning? and as he was with us talking to us and as he opened scripture to us. Yeah, was there any um, pivotal point that you saw in the small groups where you saw people starting to make a change? There was, I three years ago we did the study on Pastor Greg Finke's book, uh, Joining Jesus on his mission. And um, the main idea of that book is just that everyone in their own walk of life can be a Jesus disciple, a follower of Christ, in our own and everyday communities. You know, I sometimes hear people say, well, I don't know what to say to people, and then they say nothing. <laughs> and I think that's one of the beauties of small groups is that we learn and encourage each other. Uh, we hear each other's stories and, and share and uh, in encourage as we go through that process. But we're finding that the small groups, the, the group setting is a, a powerful tool. And uh, we don't need to think that we're gonna be perfect as we do this, right. uh, but that we just try and step out on that discipleship journey and move forward. Right, we're trying to be more like Christ. We're not perfect. <laughs> but do you have any examples of real things you've seen with people from your groups where they've changed or done different things? Sure, trying different things, right. We've got folks involved in the comfort dog ministry in Marla's uh, Project Tutor at Schaefer yeah. School, at the Grandparents Program here at our own day school, and even just visiting our homebound members is a, is a very important thing. Uh, but these are real opportunities um, to show the love of Christ to others who may not know Him yet. Right. I had an experience with someone who didn't even want to attend groups back when they started. <laughs> they came to groups and three years into the process they had a block party. Uh, so that neighbors could start meeting each other and it was a start of a conversation. And you never know where that's going to go, right? Right, uh, I right. think small groups are such a great idea and I'd really encourage folks just to give them a try. 
Um, we have room in our group, I, and I'd imagine you do the same. We do, and I'd like to encourage everyone, too, to try it out. We have a drop-in group that meets on Sundays. We'll be starting up again after Labor Day, and just give it a try. I'll put my name and number in the bulletin, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. I'm sure over the summer you'll be happy, too, sure. uh, that people can just tap us on the shoulder and ask. Absolutely. Great. Thanks, John. Thank you, Mary Rose. Nice seeing you. You, too. We're the Van Dams. I'm Steve. This is Jennifer. We're new members here at St. John's. And we're excited to be a, fam a part of the family here at St. John's. Um, we have three kids. Jackson is 15, Ryan is 11, and Allie is 8. Our uh, number one priority when we were searching for a new church home was uh, that we find a church that was, was Bible-based. And not just for us, but mainly for our children so that they could get a, a, a proper Christian education. Um, we, uh, we felt comfortable the first time we came here. We, we, uh, we heard a sermon that was, was relatable and that was comfortable and, uh, and, and not judgmental. And um, we also uh, were excited about the Sunday School program. Yeah, our children, of course, the very first day were a little nervous, a new place, a new different people and that, but they felt very welcomed and by week three they were putting their clothes on, getting ready to go to Sunday school and all was well. So they really enjoyed the Sunday school program. And the youth group program as well? My, our son Jackson is 15 and of course getting the 15 year old to do <laughs> much that has to do with church period is hard, but he is willing to come and he really enjoys the with everybody what they do and just the discipleship up in the, the eagle's nest he thinks that's a cool place yeah we're, we're just really excited to be here and um i i, I feel relieved that we found a, a church home that 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 we can we can grow in and that our children can grow in and uh we're looking forward to serving many years here Some years of going to church, I started to abuse alcohol, and <clears throat> about that time we moved from Westchester to Glen Ellen, and uh, I just kind of stopped going to church because I thought it was, what's the use of going to church if I'm doing <laughs> abusing alcohol and doing something different? The other six days, it, it, I always believed in God, and I always feared God because that's what my mother taught us. <clears throat> and uh, I started going to this uh, uh, club and met this one particular lady that came there. And I wanted, for some reason, I had a desire to go back to church, a strong desire. <clears throat> and Alcoholics Anonymous, they teach you to have a higher power. I had this strong desire to meet or to go to church. And I met uh, Margaret and she talked to me about going to church. She, she never really talked to me about going to church, she talked about this church. Like I knew where it was at and all that and I didn't. <coughs> And I started going to church. I got introduced. See, what I knew about the guy, God, the, the Bible was the Old Testament. Nothing really. And then I found out about the, the four Gospels. And 
I became what I feel a Christian. After I started coming here, I learned something about Jesus and the new gospel, <coughs> or, or the, uh, the gospels, and uh, I felt that uh, the first time in my life that I became a Christian, that I believed in Jesus, I understood Jesus.